Hello and welcome, this is Mouse Gunner, and in this video we're going to look at a firearm that outside its space age looks, which landed it and its cousins in some science fiction films around the time of its first release, has a unique element of its design that never really caught on, but is still interesting nonetheless. The unique thing about the Calico firearms are their helical fed magazines that allow for large capacities and a relatively compact design. The M100 we will be looking at in this video has a capacity of 100 rounds of 22 long rifle. So let's jump right in, and I'm going to predominantly focus on the functionality of the magazine rather than the rest of the firearm, because the rest of the firearm consists of a simple straight blowback operated system paired with a hammer fired mechanism. I have covered both systems in previous videos, so instead I'm just going to focus on the unique element of this firearm, which is its magazine, which is this cylinder shaped object at the top of the firearm. The magazine does feed from the top, and we can see all the rounds arrayed inside it, 100 in total. And the way that this works is it uses a spiral-shaped follower that you can see in the center of the magazine. And this works like an auger. So what it's going to do, under spring tension, as rounds are being fed in, it's going to rotate. This rotation is going to bring the rounds around. And you can actually see a track inside the magazine here. So the rounds are going to follow the track as they're brought around. And this is eventually going to bring them in a spiraling path round and around and around until finally it gets up to the feed lips right here. And then as the action operates, the round will be fed in. So I'm just going to go ahead and show that in action so so the first thing that's going to happen is the trigger is going to be pulled which releases the hammer which is going to come forward and that's going to set off the round and because this is a straight blowback op operated system the bolt is just going to start traveling to the rear and as it travels to the rear it's going to pass the feed lips of the magazine we're going to see the spent cartridge case get ejected and once that happens, we see the round is already coming down into the feed lip. So now we can more clearly see the feed lip. So we just have a piece of metal that uh, sits on the end of the magazine. And the auger is just going to rotate that round into the feed lip. And it's just going to rest at this point until the bolt comes back forward. And we can see that this top end of the bolt is high enough that it actually extends into the cutout of the feed lips, so it's just going to come forward, hit the back end of that cartridge, kicking it out, and into the chamber. So let's go ahead and see an x-ray view of what's happening inside of the magazine that's causing it to rotate. So I'm going to bring that back around, and now we can see the spring itself. So What's going on is we have this big, long coil spring that goes the full length of the magazine. And it has been put under a tremendous amount of spring tension. And it is causing this piece here at the end to rotate. So we can see that happening as the round is fed in. So you can see the spring is twisting and it is pulling this piece at the end around. And that is causing the auger to turn via this keyed lug at the end of this cap. So if I come out into the x-ray, we can see that keyed in. I'm going to have to use this special tool to hide some things so we can see in here because there are some things in our way. So you can see right here is the cap and here is that keyed lug and it is fitting into a corresponding cutout in the follower. So that is what is pulling the follower around or causing it to rotate. One of the main issues with this design is the reloading process. And to do that, first we have to remove the magazine from the firearm, which we accomplish by pushing in on the magazine release here. Squeezing in on that allows us to lift the back end of the magazine up, and then we can pull the magazine out of the firearm. And now that we have the magazine out of the firearm, we can start the reloading process. I have heard of speed loaders being sold with Calico firearms that supposedly make this a much quicker process, but if you don't have a speed loader, you're going to have to do this manually, and that is a lengthy, tedious, and laborious process. And more or less what you're going to have to do is load in these rounds one at a time from the feed lip end, more or less the way you would with a traditional box-style magazine. 
And as you do that, you're going to need to release and then add tension. So first you're going to release tension and you do this by pushing in on this button at the rear. So if we take an x-ray at that button, you can see that it's spring loaded. And what it's going to do is release this part here. And this part, we can see the spring fits inside it. This part is used to wind up the spring. So as you twist around this this part here or rotate it around and a the correct direction you're going to wind up the spring you're going to twist it adding that spring tension so pushing it on this button releases that tension so to start the process you first push in the button releasing the tension allowing the follower to be more or less slack you're then going to put in a round you're going to add some tension by winding up this part here which you do by we come out here turning on this knob so this knob is going to turn that part inside which is going to wind up the spring so you're just going to turn this a little bit to add in enough tension so that you can start pushing in more rounds and have a little bit of retention and uh, uh, tension on that spring so that you can continue to push in the rounds and have them feed properly you're going to keep doing that until you can't feed anymore then you're going to release the tension you're going to Re-add the tension just enough so that you can keep loading it. You're going to keep doing that process until you have, in this case, all 100 rounds loaded in. Now, I've seen a video of this process done manually, and it took, I think, over five minutes, if I'm remembering correctly. So, a very lengthy process. Now, I have seen on these knobs a crank that helps you turn, but in this particular case, we don't have one of those cranks, so you just use the knob to turn this thing around. In any case, once you're all done, the, you're then going to need to apply the appropriate spring tension uh, from what I saw in the example video. I think it was uh, 15 revolutions. So quite a bit, but you're going to need to make sure that you have proper tension on the magazine to get it to function as it should. Outside of the issues with the reloading process, there are other problems with the Calico firearm designs that when you think about, it's not really that surprising that it never really caught on. With that complexity of reloading process, you also have a very complex magazine. A more complex magazine, uh, especially when you compare it to a more simple box style magazine, means more manufacturing processes, more expensive to manufacture overall. And when you're marketing this thing to law enforcement agencies and militaries, which is what Calico was predominantly doing when they first introduced this, those organizations are interested or think about magazines as a, an item that you can dispose of. You can drop and forget about, and it's not that big of a deal because it's cheap. When you have a magazine that is as complex as this, it's no longer cheap. It's very expensive, and you don't want to be dropping th these things around and forgetting them and leaving them behind. Uh, that's not going to be very good for your logistics. And then you have the issue with the magazine and all the weight of the rounds that it holds. Yes, it has a very large capacity, and that's one of its advantages, but with that capacity it comes a lot of weight, all of the weight of the rounds that it is holding. And where you place that magazine on the firearm is going to be a big uh, dictator of the balance of the firearm, which is kind of a problem with helical-fed magazine uh, firearm designs in general, not just the Calico. So with the Calico, you have the magazine towards the rear, so this is going to be a rear-heavy firearm when it's loaded fully. If you place the magazine towards the front, uh, more traditional placement for the uh, magazine feeding, it would be very front heavy. So it is difficult with this magazine and how heavy it can be to have a well-balanced firearm. So, you know, those issues combine and you realize that they kind of outweigh the advantages. The main advantage being the magazine capacity. You have a laborious loading process. If you don't have a speed loader with you, again, think about law enforcement and military applications it's going to take you minutes to load a single magazine. Yes, once it's loaded, you have 100 rounds there, but once you empty out that magazine, it's going to take a long time for you to reload it again. And again, it, the expense of it, if you lose one, that's, that's money down the drain, and, you know, that's a problem. In any case, with all that being said... This firearm didn't catch on, but it's still an interesting oddity to examine. And I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. This is Mouse Gunner, signing out.